Okay, so this is the chapter one in class review that we're going to do. Um, the first problem here, find the difference quotient. So the whole idea is to take this A plus H right here, and we're putting it in for the X's, okay? So that's, this becomes that part of the equation, and then the A is in the second part. So I will go ahead and do that on a, I need a little bit more space, so I'm going to do it on another slide here. Okay, so we did the difference quotient one, and now we got to find the real zeros of this function. So finding the real zeros, how do we do the real zeros? Well, we take a look, and we are going to find out what makes this equation equal to zero. That's it. So in this case, right here, what will make that equal to zero? X equals zero. In this case, anything? No, it's going to be imaginary. In this case, what will it be? Four. Four. So these are the two values that will make, that will help us find the real zeros of this function. So as far as the end behavior goes, here's what we're looking at. First of all, we need to see if we have an odd or even power. An odd power tells us that the arrowheads finish like this. This is odd. An even power tells us that the arrowheads will finish in the same direction. So odd can be like this, or it can be like this. Even will be both, let me put a line here, will be either both up or both down. Well, how do you know? Well, if it's positive, or not in front for the leading coefficient. In this case, this is positive. So since it's positive, that's our first step. Now let's see the powers. I've got x, x squared, and another x. This will give me x to the fourth if I multiply everything out, right? So that's going to be even, and it's positive. So this is the positive version. This is the negative version. So this is the end behavior we're looking at. So we can describe it as... As x goes to infinity, f of x, which is our y, so as we're going higher up in the x, what is the y doing? Going to positive infinity as well. And we can also do the same thing to the left side. As x goes to negative infinity, so on the left side, f of x also goes to positive infinity. It goes up as well. So when the graph goes towards the left, towards infinity, the graph goes up. F of x values go up. They get higher. As the graph goes towards the right, positive infinity, the F of x values, the y values, also go up higher. That's why we look at those arrowheads. All right, next question. Suppose that the graph of f is given. Describe the graph of the function y equals f of x minus 3 minus 3 can be obtained from the graph of f. So this is a transformation. So all we have to do is indicate what it is. And in this case, we are shifting to the right. So shift to the right. And that's this right here, three units. And this next part is going to tell me down three units. That is the transformation that is happening on this graph. All right, here we go with the next question. It says, use the table to evaluate the expression f of g of 6. So let's go ahead and uh, do this in another color now as well. So we want f of g of 6. And... Remember, we said we always go inside out. What does inside out mean? I'm going to do this part first before I do that part. So we go inside out. So I need g of 6. That's my first step. So I look at the table. Here's g of x. Here's 6. That value is 5. So now that tells me I need step 2, f of 5. So here's f of x right there. Here's the 5 right there. That answer is 4. And so that gives us the final answer of 4. 
Okay, moving on to the next question. We need to find the vertical asymptotes in any holes for this equation. So looking at this, first of all, let's start with the vertical asymptotes. How do I get vertical asymptotes? I set the bottom, so the denominator, equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that. Well, I'm going to go ahead and do one step first, though, because this will help me with the holes. I'm going to factor each part. I will factor the top. I'll factor the bottom. If you forget how to factor, I've got videos posted up reminding you how to factor. Okay? So let's go ahead and factor the top. And this becomes x plus 7 times x plus 2. When we factor the bottom, this becomes x plus 6 times the x minus 1. Okay, so we want to set the denominator here equal to 0. So we have x plus 6 times x minus 1 equal to 0. So our two values are 1 and negative 6. Okay, so we have vertical asymptotes at x equals negative 6 and 1. We've solved that part. Do we have any holes for this? No, nothing reduces from the top and bottom. If I had something reduce, suppose this x plus 6 said x plus 2, then I can reduce these. So if this had said x plus 2 right there, then I would be able to reduce those, and that would be a hole at negative 2. But since it's not, for this problem, there are no holes. Now, how can we find horizontal asymptotes? I didn't ask for it in this question, but if, what if we wanted horizontal asymptotes? Well, we can take a look. There's multiple ways. I showed you that for a rational function, you can take a look at the coefficients if the highest powers match, if the highest, if the right here is what I'm looking at. Since they're both x squared, the coefficient is 1 over 1. So you have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. So this is, we call this mx squared over nx squared, and we look at the m over n value. It's on that review I gave you earlier. Now, if the highest power was on the bottom, then you have a horizontal asymptote at 0. If the highest power is on the top, then you don't have a horizontal asymptote. So go back. That's the easiest way to do it for rational functions. It's just like, it's sort of like finding limits. It kind of is, but it's just a way to memorize it. This next one, honestly, the, there are two that are, there's a few on this that are great AP test questions. This next one is something they love to put on AP type. The table is something they love to put on AP type. You may see some of the other ones. It's hit and miss. The difference quotient, you will see that, but you'll see that in a different form. And we'll talk about that when we get there. But this next question is an excellent question of something you will see on an AP test. So let's take a look at this. Again, it's composition, and we need g of f of 2. So the first thing I need to do here, let's go ahead and choose a, another color again. And go back to the red. Let's find f of 2 because we always go inside out. So this inside is f of 2. So my f graph is this red one. So at 2, at x equals 2, the value is negative 2. So for part A, f of 2 was negative 2. So now I need g. This is the next step of negative 2. So I go to this on the graph right here, and I find negative 2 in the x, and I go up to the g graph, and that value is at 1. So that equals 1. So again, the first step was go x is 2, find the f right here. Got that value at negative 2. So now the next thing, x is negative 2, go up to the g graph, there's a value at 1, negative or positive 1, sorry. Okay, for part B, it's very similar. We're going to start with G of 2, inside out. So I go to 2, and then I'm going up to the G graph this time. So I go to 2 in the X, up to the G graph. 
that value is way up there, and that value is at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So f of g of 2 gives me f of 5, which now I go and find 2, 3, 4, 5, go up to the f graph, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's at 4. And finally, g of f of 0. So g of f of 0, I find the f of 0. And right there, and that's just 0. So now I need g of 0. OK, so same concept. I'm at 0. I move up to the g graph. That value is 3. Okay, that is this review. Again, I'll post this up online for you to take a look at when you need to. And we have f of x equaling x squared minus the 2x plus the 1. And then we know that we have f of a plus h. This is the difference quotient minus f of a all over h. So... The a plus h goes in right here, a plus h squared minus 2 times a plus h plus the 1. That is this. Put in an a, you get a squared plus or minus 2a. Let's erase that. Oops. That didn't work out so well. Okay, let's go back to here. Okay, so then we get a squared minus the 2a plus 1, and that is what goes into there. So we're going to substitute all that in, and we end up with a plus h squared minus 2a plus h plus 1 minus this. Be careful. I'm putting it in big brackets there so that you know that to distribute that negative sign. And this becomes a squared minus 2a plus 1. Okay, all over h. So now we just got to clean this up. So this becomes, after you FOIL everything out, a squared plus 2ah plus h squared minus 2a minus 2h. Notice I'm distributing over here, plus the 1. Now, be careful and distribute that negative to all parts. This goes to all parts. So minus a squared plus 2a minus 1 all over h. Now, clean it up. For instance, these a squareds will reduce out. The What else do you see reducing out? The minus 2a plus 2a, right? And then this plus 1 minus 1. So once you clean everything up, you should end up with 2ah plus h squared minus 2h all over h. Well, look, everything has an h in common. So I'm going to take that h out. And that reduces out as well. So your final answer is 2a plus h minus 2. Okay, so this should have been a 2 right here. Sorry about that. That should have been a 2 to get our correct answer right there. And this being my 2 right there as well. Okay. All right, yay.